hello, welcome back to part two. Hopefully you watched part one and let's recap that if you didn't, all we did is went over, plus some rambling, we went over G0 is a rapid move, G1 is a linear move with a feed rate, and G2 is just going clockwise around an arc with a feed rate which you can retain that feed rate once you call it up once, remember. Please go back and watch the first part if you didn't watch this. Just trying to catch up anyway. If they didn't, uh, G3 is going to be a counterclockwise move. Same way, you can use the same feed rate in G1, 2, and 3. Once it's called up, it's there. You can change it in any line you want. And then it's going to remain that. G20 is going to be in inches, so be sure you're calling that up in the start of your program if you want to be in inches. And most of your post processors are going to do that just, just to make sure. Go ahead and call it up. G90 needs to be called up for absolute moves. And uh, try to avoid G91 is all I was saying. I just want you to see what it is so you'll understand it when you see it in the code. And then G17 just means we're working in normal X and Y coordinates here. And so remember we said G code is movements and M codes are to turn something on or off. So turn our spindle on or off if we have one. If you have a router you don't worry about that. Just Turn your router on manually. We don't use coolant on wood, so you got M8 and M9 for coolant on and off. M30 ends the program or M2, either one, but I like M30 better. But these post processors we use is going to put M2. So here's the code I wrote last weekend, and it's not exactly right. And I'll show you why. Uh, just something to think about. So let's pull that up. Um, this is the one I actually drew. So uh, this is in VCarve Pro. So I drew these circles to represent a quarter of an inch end mill. So if you want to look at the size, you just look over here on the set size. You see 0.25. Okay, so you notice that's right on the line that we're trying to cut. Now, I zeroed this right on our, our X, Y, zero is right here. That way we can see exactly what size we're building. And this is 11.75 by 7 inches. Okay, so we got those numbers. Now, after you get through messing around, you can always put your zero in the middle if you want to. If you're trying to center in a work piece that might be easier. Simple math can put you there either way so it really doesn't matter it's just easier to do the math in your head like this. So if we wanted to now I put a half inch radius in here you know and if you wanted to you could come in and dimension all that but I can tell you that's a half inch radius Oh, excuse me, I'm getting tired this time of day. So, now, the way you need to think about what you're going to be doing here is just, you're just machining this. And forget that it's wood or forget what material it is. That doesn't matter at this time. It could be a piece of aluminum. It could be a piece of titanium. It doesn't really matter what it is right now. What it matters is and from the research I did this morning, and in, um, let me make sure you don't see my ugly face on the screen right now, because you've met me, we know each other now, I know the last video, it didn't come on, but we don't need my ugly face on here, and make sure we can see the whole screen, so, so here we go, so, conventional milling would be if you're moving against the grain, so 
this event this end mill is turning clockwise right and the center of the spindle is what you're zeroing when you zero your x and y you're supposed to be centering any size cutter you have on there should be on center that's how it works okay now if you don't know how to do that be sure and ask questions I, I'm more than happy to help you there's a lot of ways to do that but uh, honestly you could take a V carve end mill and just point it right at wherever your zero is whether it's in the very center or whether it's right here it doesn't really matter you can point pretty close with a v-carve end mill and find your x y zero and i mean there's other ways to do that so don't worry about that too much just find your zero and if you have extra material on here it's not that critical anyway especially if you're going to mill around the outside which is what we did here so what i was going to tell you i've learn that in in metalworks you always want to be climb milling so that would mean you go clockwise around a outside contour and then if you were going inside you would go counterclockwise so the end mill is turning that way so as you can think it would be trying to climb the material right if it was turning here and you had it in your hand your fingers you would just be climbing this way now, if you're going this way, you're kind of working against the deal, and it would want to kind of be pointing back this way a little bit. But the bottom line is, if you're turning this way clockwise and milling this way, you're throwing all the material off the top side of this right in front of where you're milling. And you don't want that with metal because you're just running over chips that you've already cut. Now, I understand if you've got a vacuum running or if you've got a way to evacuate your chips, maybe you've blowed them out of the way or whatever. But, you know, that's just the general correct way of doing it is climb milling. So I saw a video this morning. Now, he was using an upcut end mill. And normally to do an outside, you're going to want to use a compression uh, end mill so that the bottom, if you don't know what that is, you need to do a little research on that. But basically, the bottom has a short amount that's pulling up. It's doing an up cut from the bottom, and the rest of it's doing a down cut. So that theoretically, that would keep from chipping out the edge around your wood on both, both ends. It's going to be pulling up from the bottom, then pushing down from the top, and hopefully you can evacuate those chips. But from what I saw, at least with an up cut, a conventional mill leaves a cleaner cut. So let's do that this direction. On the other G code I did, I was going in a climb mill direction. But the problem is, you see how this line is right here? You don't want to follow your profile line. So this is a quarter of an inch end mill, so you want to offset that over half of that distance so that this edge is right on that line. So you're going to move it over an eighth of an inch, 0.125, right? Because this is 0.25, you move it over half the distance. Now you're going to be right on that edge. So just to show you that in an example here, let's see. As you can see, you're going to be cutting 125 more. Now if this doesn't matter what this size ends up, I wouldn't even worry about it. And that's what I did last weekend. I, was, I didn't care. All I was going to do is try to cut this general shape and I wanted to be sure I was cutting some material and I just roughly measured what it was and so I ended up cutting this as you would imagine 125 on both sides so a quarter of an inch shorter than what it originally was drawn out to be. Now if you want to do that different what you're going to want to do is take this Let's move this end mill back down. I got size. So let's move it back to zero. And I would prefer to start it. Now remember, the wood is still here in this corner when we start this cut. This is where we want to end up. So what I would do is move that back. Probably
probably three eighths just to be sure you got plenty of room. So let's go in the X position. Um, I'm not sure why that's showing 125. It's, oh, because that's going to get to the edge of that. So we're measuring from the center. So let's just come back minus. 0.25 that's probably enough same way on the y 0.25 apply that oh i didn't put a negative there dummy minus 0.25 always pay attention where your um, your negatives are that's the easiest way to screw it so now you can see that you're awfully close to that corner. You're a little bit too close. So what you're going to want to do is back that off. Like I said earlier, just back your your uh, cutter. You want to be on this line. So we're going to start milling that way. So you want to be lined up on that line. So all you got to do is head out on there. So let's back that up to negative 375. Right there. I picked the wrong one, of course. You'd be on the X. See how you can screw up pretty easy if you're not paying attention. So now we're backed up. So right here's where the corner of our wood is before we make that cut. So we're backed up plenty of room. And so I would still zero it right here. But what I would do is when you start cutting, just start right there. You can zero right there. It doesn't really matter where you zero, as long as you're away from the material. So, so if I wanted to zero that, all I gotta do is find out that position. And we're at minus 375 on the X and minus 0.25. See, we're on that line right there. So that's where the end mill is going to be cutting, right along that line, and it ought to be pretty darn close. I wouldn't even worry about it because these end mills are really precise diameters. So, so now, since we learned what G0, G1, and all that is earlier in the last course here, so and I drew some more end mills here to show you that this is not where we want to be, but this is. If you push measure right here, you can find, see where these intersecting, where that radius is going to intersect, and that tells you down here in the bottom, if you'll notice, that shows you where you're at. So, you're at Y6.5 there, and uh, you're at X0, but remember, we need to be out. 125 that way. I'm just, this is just an example of, so you can understand, you, you don't really need this picture to do this, but it just shows you an example of how you know where to be. So let's start writing this G code here just to understand G code real easily. And let's just leave that startup code and let's just delete all of that right there because we don't need it. Because what I did was I was right on the line. That's all I did. So now let's just write it from scratch. So what I wanted you to know earlier is the startup code here, right there, just make sure you put a G0, G90, G54, G20, which is inches, and G17. And that's plenty. All of that may already be in your control, but just to be sure, it doesn't hurt to have it there. Now the first code, now you're going to have your tool in, you're going to set your zero. I would go ahead and set that zero right on that intersecting point right here. Okay. This, it doesn't hurt nothing to be right there. We just know any move we make, we're going to go ahead and tell it. Now a lot of times Vectric will go ahead and say, it'll call it G0, um, you know, rapid move to X0 and Y0. Well, that's going to put you right there. We don't really want to be right there, so we're going to tell it to come right here. So let's do that as our first move. 
Let's put in G zero. Let's get the capital letters on. And let's put G zero. X. Remember we were minus. If you don't know where we're at, we just remember we were negative three eighths. It, it doesn't matter how far negative you are on the on there, because we just want to have plenty of room so when we come in, we got a little room before we hit material. So we're gonna go x minus 0.375. So we're three eighths out. So we got an eighth of an inch of room between this material right here. And we're going to go ahead and be at Y. Remember that edge of that part is at zero, but we got to be down 125. So you can just touch this and see where you're at. So we're going to be at Y minus 0.125. And that's all on that. So then we'll go to the next line. Okay, and now we're going to move Remember, we're going to do a conventional mill, so it's just going to go this way. And where we're going to go to is where we've got to know. Is we're going to do a G1 move, but what we've got to know, let me move this out of the way. Remember, I told you you can measure this and find out where that intersecting radius is. We're going to turn a half inch radius on this. If you weren't, you would go all the way out to this line right out here, which is going to be it. 11 and 3 quarters, but we're not going that far. We're going to stop that turn at this radius right here. Okay. So that's at 11 and a quarter of an inch. If you'll see at the bottom, that right there where that intersects is 11 and a quarter. So let's go back to our drawing board here. And we're going to do a G1 X 11 point, what I tell you, should be a half inch less than where we're going, 11.25. But the problem is with that, we have to think about is we're going to be going beyond this by a quarter, so that's why really when you draw this, you should draw it to the size that you want to do your tool path on. But this is just a learning experience here. So because that's a half inch, normally that's at 11.25, but we need to be 125 beyond that. That way when we get here, we're clearing that, All right? So let's move this. I'm not even real sure about this, to be honest. We'll have to do this and find out, but I think this is okay. Let's just do that 11.25. But at this point, we're going to have to come up with, oh, we didn't call a feed rate, so let's go feed rate of, I don't know, let's make something up, but let's just say at 45 inches a minute. Now the feed rate's called up, so the next line, we'll stay on G1. No, we're going to do a counterclockwise move, an arc, remember? Remember this GO2 right here is a clockwise, GO3 is counterclockwise. So we're going counterclockwise, so we're going to go G3. Now we're going to go X. And what we're going to have to do is move from this point, which is, if you look at the bottom, you'll notice it's 11.750, but we need to add an eighth of an inch, because remember how this, let's move that out there so we'll, we'll go ahead and know. So let's move that one over there to 11.25, we'll look at that, and then we'll come down to minus 0.125. Now let's see where that is at. See, if you'll notice, I 
our intersecting angle was back here. So we got to find out where to move this radius to. So I don't know why we're not there. Now why? Oh, I'm not in the center. That's why. Let's do this again. I don't know what to do with 11.25. Remember, we're in the center of our um, our tool there. And the y needs to be minus 0.125. Apply that. Okay. Well, that's where we're starting our move. But we want that to be able to rotate around. So we should be okay there because you'll notice at the bottom we are at 11.25 on our X. But we want to end up at 0.5 because remember we're half inch radius. That means we're half inch from that line in the Y direction. So next, the next move we need to make is going to be at 0.5 so now let's go look at our G code what was that so we went to G3 X11 0.25 I haven't ever written this stuff before either I'm just I know how I just haven't done it and then we're going to go to Y same move we're going to move X and Y in the same move, and we're going to go y point five hundred. It's half an inch, and we're going to say a radius of point five inches. You don't have to have all them zeros. It's just if you want to just put r point five. And a lot of times you'll slow that feed rate down around there if you're taking very much material off, but. We probably won't worry about that. We're just running 45 inches a minute. It's not that bad. So that should move up to there. So remember we said we're going to Y.5. So let's measure where that is with our measuring tool. And where this is, is Y.5 inches. But we're over here. We need to be is 11. Uh, what did I say we was at? This is 11 and 3 quarters, and we need to be at 125 above that. So let's calculate this and make sure that I didn't do that wrong. So 11.75 plus 0.125 is. 11 and 7 eighths is where we need to end up over here. So let's look at our G code. We probably didn't. G3. Yeah, I was just writing where we were at. That's where we was. But we need to go to 875. Okay, so we put a radius in there. So that's all we need. We're going to do a G3 from there. And we're going to sweep around to here. So uh, let's put that right there and see if it looks right. So uh, let's move this to 11.875. And the Y at this point to where we need to is going to be half above that plus yeah because we're on the center line so we're going to be at y point 125 no point 0.5 I believe that would be right right there Okay, so see that looks right. That's where we're at. And to double check that, all we got to do 
we will measure this and where our intersecting point is it's going from there to right there and that's our radius so we're a half inch right there that's what that radius is so that's right we are at 11 and 7 eighths and half inch so once you get that figured out you know it's not that big a deal but uh, so what it meant we were going across here on a G1 move and we went all the way to this point remember we stopped at this point on that line and on our G3 all we did is moved the Y up to there and the X out to here and that's where we ended up right there and that's what our G code is saying so then our next line all we're going to do is go straight up with another G1 move so you got to change it back to G1 because we were in G3 and then we're just going to go Y um, let me figure out where we were this is 7 inches so that's going to be the six and a half because we got a half inch radius so we're going to do g1 y 6.5 inches and that's all on that line we don't need to call a feed rate because we've already got one going right here remember and when we get to that point we're doing the same thing we're going to move with a g3 and we got to move up with the y And our X is going to end up moving. Some people always want to use the, the X before the Y. I guess it doesn't really matter which order you do it in. But you're going to do X is going to be over here, which is going to be basically where we was when we were right here, remember. So all you're going to do is put that 11 and a quarter. That's where we're moving to. So we're going to go X. 11.25 and you're going to do Y and we need to come an eighth of an inch above that remember for half of our deal so we were at 7 inches so we need to be at 7.125 and that's that line and just in case you wonder if that's true then you're going to go can check that with your move and just say we're going to 11.25 and the Y is at 7.125 and you'll move that and if you'll notice that's right where we're going to be keeping the end mill right on the outside of our line so I won't keep doing that I just show it proven to you that that's the correct dimension that's how you can double check yourself if you're Happen to be writing a code, getting used to how to do this. So now the next move we're going to do is the same thing. We're going to go G1. It's going to move a straight line, and we're going to come back. Sorry, it's hard to see this, but all we're doing is moving to this point, which is going to be a half inch past zero. So we're just going to go to 0.5 on our X. So G1, X. 0.500 and that's where we're going to stop that line and then we're going to do our G3 move around that corner then around this corner right here and we're coming down remember this was at 7 inches so we're going to reduce that by half so we're coming down to X is going to be at on the negative side of zero so we're going to go minus 0.125 and the y is going to be minus from seven so 6.875 i didn't even put the y in there did i y 6.875 that's going to be right here No, it's six and a half. We're going half inch radius, right? See, that's why you double check yourself. Just kind of hover around where you think it is. 
and then look down there at the bottom. That's where we're going to be. We're going to come over on the outside of that line. X minus 0.125 and Y is 6.5. And, and that's going to be the end of that one. And again, if we wanted to, we could take one of these circles and just put it at, what did I tell you? X is going to be minus 0.125. And the Y was minus uh, 6.5 that's wrong it's just a 6.5 in it there we go see we're right there where we put it make sure in the code we didn't put a negative in there no we put y 6.5 and the x is minus an eighth of an inch to allow for the cutter diameter there a radius now all we got to do is just follow right through here because we've already cut that, but we got to come around this corner because we've never cut that corner off right there. So we're going to have to do it one more time on that radius. So let's come right straight down with a G1. And we're going to go, we're not going to move the X because we're already in line. So we're going to go Y minus, and we're going to go down to, this place right here that's at the top of that radius, so that's a half inch radius. We're going to stop it at 0.5, y minus 0.5, and then we're going to do a G3 to turn that corner, and we're going to come all the way down below it, remember, so we can clear that cutter. So we're going to go G3 minus, nope, not yet. G3, so we're already at this point, so we need to move the X around to this point, which is a half inch, so we're going to G3, X, 0.500, and Y, to minus 0.125. And that's all there. Oh, we didn't call a radius. I didn't do that up here either, did I? Always got to have a radius in there when you do those. We should have three of them so far. So we did G3 with a radius there. We don't really need those zeros. Radius 0 0.5 is one, two. Should have had one right there, R.5. That's why you always go back and double check your G code to make sure you wrote everything right. R.5. So now we've got one, two, three, four corners. So now we're at this point right here. Now, just to make sure we don't have a little funky mark right there where we started and where we stopped let's move it just a little bit past and kind of angle off of it just in case there's a little burr there we'll just angle off of it so after that turn let's just do a g1 and remember we were at x um, 0.5 so we're going to move that a little bit farther so let's go let's just go 50 thousandths more so let's go x 0.550 and we're going to move the y down about 50 thousandths and so let's go uh, minus 0.175 and that's the end of it so all it's going to do is going to come around this corner and it's going to blend that off of there by just coming a little bit off the line and once it does that, we can go back to a rapid move. Let's say G0. Let's go Z point uh, one inch. And then you could go ahead and do another line of G0. Um, just move it out of our way. I like to move it up out of our way at this point. So we're up above the work, so let's just go... This was 7 inches. Let's just move it 10 inches. So let's go G0. 
X can be same spot here around the zero. Let's get X zero and Y ten inches. And then we're going to do an M30 to end the program. Now, what if you'll remember up here at the top, we never did raise the Z or do anything with the Z, so we got to think about, I don't know where the Z was before that or anything, so at the very first of the code, what we ought to do is just say G0Z uh, one inch. Okay. That ain't no Z. Z, one inch. Okay. And then we can move to that position right there. And then before we do any cutting, we got to bring the Z down. So you can do it with a rapid move. It doesn't really matter. You can go G0, Z. And if this material happened to be, let's just say it's 5 eighths thick, so let's say 0.625. This actually is about, if I use the same material I got out there, remember it was a little more than three quarters thick. I think I was cutting it at 770, let's call it 765. So this goes G0Z minus 765. That gives me 15 thousandths to get below three quarters. I think it's somewhere in that neighborhood. So once it comes down to that level, then we can come in and start our cut. So we're going to be out to this point right here. We're going to be we're going to be up at one inch above the material. We're going to move down to this point right here, and then before we start moving this way, we're going to bring it on down. Well, it's just about touching material here, and then it's going to start that move to go all the way around it. So that's all there is to making that G code, and I, I know that was long, and I was thinking about it. You know, that's just how it is. You've got to kind of think about it and double check yourself while you're doing it. And uh, uh -oh. I just got rid of something. G zero one. I don't know what I just did. I got rid of something. I was trying to <laughs> delete this stuff. I didn't need these on here anymore. So anyway, you see how the G-code works. And we can go out here and run this G-code if you want. And uh, just to see how it works. It may not touch any material because I've already cut that. A little bit small because the first g-code I made I made it right on this line so it undercut the size smaller than what we had drawn so if you didn't want to go through all that trouble and you just wanted to use the line that you've got and double check yourself all you got to do is do this offset and all you have to do is push outwards um, 0.125 like that and just go offset and it would just make a line right here that you could use and double check yourself on all those but I'm just showing you how that works to be sure your cutter is outside that line so the way we did it the cutter would be right up inside this line okay so I need to look at my G code and see what I deleted but we're just going to start out with G0, G9, and G54. And a lot of times I'll put me a little space in here so I can see. And then we're going to go G0, Z1. There's where I messed up earlier. I just pulled that up. Now, we're going to move it down to that corner for the cut. Bring the X or the Z down. And then we're going to start our cut all the way around it. So anyway, hopefully you can identify how to make, and I'm going to save this. And I can run this on the machine. In fact, if you want to, we'll go out there and run it. Let's just save as 
let's just call this learning view code. I'll just say learning. Part two uh, here, and we'll save that. And I can pull that up out there at the machine, and I'll guarantee you it'll run just fine. Just type in a simple G code like that. For the sake of learning what each line means, is all that's about. So, so I close that, and actually, I, I was going to tell you about this program that. Um, you can actually load a, this G-code tutor. You can go on here and you can look at this G-code. So if you go to, uh, let's pull up that G-code that we just wrote and look at it. And you can see that, I hate that this mouse zooms so fast like this. But that just shows you where the Z is gonna come down to and you can click on a line of this and it'll show you each line of what it's fixing to do. You see where it came down to there? And you can actually use your cursor, I think, and just come down to every line and it just shows you how that toolpath is going to work. You see how we did that and then we blended away from it and then we moved up over there away from it and that was the end of the code. So that's pretty cool little program if you want to load that, it's free. And they also have some helpful information in here. You can download G-codes and different things in here. But that shows the program we just made. And we can go out here on the machine and run it and see how it runs if we want to. And just close this. And we don't need this anymore. Anyway, let's go out there and try it, and we'll get back. This is getting to be a long video. Hello, welcome back. I just, uh, I kind of tired yesterday afternoon, so I had to, I did the recordings yesterday, but I'm going to try to just walk through this. When we went out to the machine with that G-code, and I had a few issues, I was just getting really tired, and I wasn't thinking straight, so I made some mistakes, but, uh, some of it's good. I'll show you as quick as I can. Let's do a voiceover on this so uh, you don't have to listen to my rambling out in the shop too much. So let's look at there's two videos here. I'm trying to see which one was first. I think it's this one. And let's just see if. Okay, now we're set up out here. All right. So I went out there to run that G-code that we made. And so, let me make sure I'm not on the screen in your way here. All right. So we're gonna make this cut, but uh, like I said, in G-Sender here, you don't have any, you don't have the G-code coming up on the screen initially. And I haven't loaded the file yet here, but you'll notice I'm kind of stumbling around out here I don't have my stuff set up right yet I'm just set this monitor over here so everything is just I just got this machine like I said a couple weeks ago I haven't even had much time to do anything so now I'm loading the code that G code up that we created just cutting on this piece of scrap that I've been whittling on out here but but this is what I mean on G Sender. It just keeps you really dumbed down. And yeah, you can kind of see the shape that you're going to make. And it appears that we're set fairly close to our zero, maybe. But if I would have looked close, you can see that that rapid move, I should have tilted it and looked at that. Uh, I had an error. I had a typo in the end of that code for some reason. I had too many decimal points, and I'll show you that in a minute. And instead of this controller ignoring that, it seemed to just go ahead and run it anyway. 
So I may have to look at some settings for that, but there was definitely an error in that view code at that very end where we raised it up. So here it goes. And it was really howling. Let's listen to it. Yeah, this is zero somehow. Now I wasn't on zero good there. I was tired. I didn't get it zero yet. So that radius move is not right because the zero is off. Speed rate's too high as well, as you can tell. I'm making a full depth cut. Probably ought to run that about 20 or 25 to 40. So as you can see, somehow I'm missing a zero. I think I don't have. Hey, watch this move. <laughs> okay, you see that? Now, let's see if in the video here we can see, I'll try to pause this if, if it gets to that. What happened is the Z never raised up and it made that rapid move back there and cut right back through the work and screwed that up. Now that could have all been avoided if we had the G-code pulled up and looked at that pretty closely. And, and even if I'd have noticed that simulation drawing there showed that that line, but I not, might not have thought anything about it because it was going to go back there, but I didn't realize the Z never had came up in that simulation. So I was a little shook up there by that. So uh, let's just get towards the end of this. All I'm doing here is loading the... Now I've loaded UGS up to show you that it will show you the G code before you run. So it makes things a lot safer to catch your mistakes and stuff and also let me show you something here at the very first you see this line of code here that is in the control and when I just turn this on it has G21 in here I don't like that I haven't figured out how to disable that I've went in the machine settings and I've changed that to inches but it still comes up here so all you got to do is type that down here in the command line of G20 anytime you want to. Or that line of code, remember the startup line of code that I put in there has the G20 in it. So the machine will be in G20 when it runs that code anyway. So that's what I was showing right there. And we're in G54 uh, offset, so that's good. So the only line of code that's not in here is G20 that really needs to be out of all those that we put in the startup line. It still doesn't hurt to have it in there. So I was going to load the G code and I'll show you how it shows that. And this is in Garrett's video. I found another one of his videos you need to watch that talks about the offsets, the G54 through the G59 offsets, to make sure you understand that. Because I explained that a little bit yesterday, but not a whole lot. So. Or I may have did it in this video that I'm posting now. I can't remember now. Sorry this is so long for you. I just want you to understand this stuff. So here's where I'm loading the code. and I'm stumbling around trying to find it. Because this is a new computer and I haven't ran it on that machine maybe but once. So things are not automatically popping up like they normally would. So just finding that G-code that we kind of created there, I edited it to make it a, hopefully a better cut than what we had. But if you'll notice, let me pause it when it gets to this point. I think it gets better, but notice how it colors this. There's our G-code coming in. Remember all of our notes up here, it highlights these in different colors. Let's see if it shows it better here in just a minute. I was thinking it did. Thinking it had a better view than that. But I can just tell you, all of the G, see the G0s, G1, G3s, all that is highlighted. And then your feed rates are a different color, and then your moves are a different color. So it's real easy to see. And if you see this red down here, I didn't notice that. I mean, we didn't have this pulled up 
when I ran that the first time, or hopefully I would have noticed that's in red, that's an error. So do you see where after that we raised the Z one inch, I thought, but somehow I left a decimal point right in here, so it was Z.1.0. Normally, most controllers would just error out right there, and it wouldn't even go to that line. For some reason, this one just skipped over it and went ahead and ran that rapid move. So, um, that was my fault. I messed up. But, just showing you that if you were using UGS, you wouldn't have had the issue. Most likely, you would have saw that in the red. And also, it shows your settings here of what your machine is set on here, on your uh, console here. And you can type anything you want in this, any G code you want at any point to make some simple moves or anything you want to make. But you can do that in G Center too, I think. Just this is just laid out so much better, and uh, you can still jog and do all those functions. I do like G Center that you can do the surfacing real quick, and some of those features are neat. I mean, this also has calibration stuff in it, and any of those things if you need to do that, but. Uh, so anyway, that's what I was using on this. I, I keep both of them on my computer there so I can run either one. And uh, I like G-Sender okay except for that feature right there that you can't see that G-code. So I think I'm about to run this. Let's just get it ready here. And uh, Garrett has a lot of his older videos using G, uh, UGS and it's I don't know why he got away from that, except I'm thinking he may have had a little pressure from uh, the guys at CNC with the long mill may have pressured him to show their software. I don't know anything about it, but I know it's dangerous when you can't see your G-code, and we just proved that. And the questions that get asked on the Facebook group is, why did my machine do this or that? Well, I would have never known if I hadn't looked at the G-code, and there's the answer to it. So, uh, just remember to always go back and look at your G-code to find out why it made a funny move that you weren't expecting like that. I wasn't expecting that move. So, when you don't expect, you get an unexpected result, go look at your G-code and see what it was commanded to do, and then start looking at your machine for other problems if you can't figure it out there. Most of the time you did a command that wasn't right, just like I did. So anyway, I think I was fumbling around making terrible video here and it just didn't work that great. So uh, that's how that went down. So anyway, I appreciate you watching that. I did want to show you right quick that video that uh, Garrett had made, I just ran across this morning. There's a lot of good videos he made a long time ago that you really need to watch. So let me look at my history and I'll see. Uh, huh. Well, I'm not seeing it now, but anyway. Yeah, I guess it was this one right here. So Hi, I'm Garrett with... He was talking about how to know about G54, 55, 56, 56. So uh, look back there, that one's two years old as well. And uh, that was made about the same time as that other one in November of 20. So that's a really good video to watch on uh, some of this setting up G54 and all that. So.